Hey, really quickly, because there's really only uh, one problem in parathyroid, uh, parathyroid disorders. So let's review. So there are four parathyroid glands. They're attached posteriorly to the thyroid glands. So two on each side, two lower, two upper, okay? On each side of the, I mean, on, on the back of the thyroid gland. So if you remember, let's say in, especially in hyperthyroidism, treatment, surgical treatment of the, or surgical treatment or radiation to the thyroid glands can affect the parathyroid as well because they have their blood supply in the thyroid gland, meaning they're attached to the thyroid gland. So therefore their blood vessels, their capillaries supplying the parathyroids are in the thyroid gland. So therefore you can't separate them. Do, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like your like your nose is attached to your face. Okay? It's like that. Okay? So it's like part of the thyroid gland. So therefore they can't really be separated. They only have one function. So they secrete the parathyroid hormone, which has only one purpose. The purpose is to raise serum calcium levels. So what the parathyroid glands do is they, they constantly monitor serum levels of calcium. Whenever serum calcium levels drop, regardless of the reason, they will release parathyroid hormone, the parathormone. And then it will cause bone to break down calcium and then release it into the bloodstream. You follow? Mm -hmm. That's how it raises the serum calcium levels, right? That, that, that's the only function of, of these uh, glands. So we have two problems as with everything else. So we either have too much of the parathormone or not enough. Let's start with too much. So if it has too much parathyroid hormone, what is the main problem? So what happens to the serum calcium levels in the blood? Okay, that's it. The patient will have hypercalcemia. Signs and symptoms, you can either do chapter 11, fluid and electrolytes, or for exam purposes, I'll stick with whatever manifestations are listed here in this chapter, page 1470. So here are the results. Patient will have these manifestations, all relating to hypercalcemia. So what happens to the patient when high, there is high calcium in, content in the blood? Apathy, fatigue. So it affects all body systems. So fatigue, muscle weakness, the GI tract as well. There's nausea, vomiting, constipation, meaning that what does that tell you to peristalsis? What happens to peristalsis? It decreases when your serum calcium is too high. And of course, the most fatal here is cardiac dysrhythmia. So part of your care, of course, that you will have to place the, place the patient on a cardiac monitor okay. while you're while you're trying to lower serum calcium levels. We'll get to the interventions later. But priority would be place them on a cardiac monitor until you can implement the orders to lower serum calcium levels. Other manifestations will be more like complications. Say, because you have your calcium levels are high, you're, you're going to form calcium stones that will block any part of your urinary system, either in the kidneys, the ureters, or the the in the in the bladder or in the urethra, causing extreme pain. And you already learned about post renal AKI. So therefore, mm -hmm. when you have stones, you could develop post renal AKI. Okay, so it's not really that simple. Okay, you can you can't just say, oh, that's only hypercalcemia. No. There are several complications when you have this problem. So if it's chronic, patient will have, of course, back and joint pains because where did the calcium come from again? Your bones. Okay, so your bones will weaken, okay, resulting in these manifestations. And then your, your patients will have fractures, pathologic fractures. Pathologic fractures meaning non-traumatic fractures. They were just sitting there, laying in bed. But then why did they sustain a fracture? because the bones are that weak. 
and it increases the incidence of peptic ulcers. So again, there are complications that result from hyperparathyroidism. And these are the diagnostic tests. Of course, serum calcium levels will be high. Management. So how can we help the patient? If it's a primary hyperparathyroidism, the uh, main treatment is surgical removal. Now, I won't repeat the pre and post op care because where is the where are the parathyroid glands located again? So therefore, when you remove them, will that include yeah. injury to the thyroid gland? Yes. So therefore, is the pre and post op care different? Yes. The same because it's basically surgical removal of the thyroid gland as well. Although it may not be total or radical all the time. It may just be partial. Okay, mm -hmm. But the problem here is if let's say the patient has a tumor, right, which is a secondary type of hyperparathyroidism, there's a tumor in the uh, par one or more parathyroid glands. If that's the case, it doesn't have to have, you don't need four tumors to have hyperparathyroidism, meaning secondary. If, even if there's just one tumor in one of the, hyper, I mean, in the parathyroid glands, that's enough to cause the disorder. Meaning the tumor doesn't have to be on all four. If you have a tumor in just one of them, then it will cause secondary hyperparathyroidism. If the patient's not a candidate for surgery, then these are our non-surgical options. Hydration, lots of hydration. So the patient will have both increased oral and IV intake. Of course, we can't really dump liters orally, right? Mm -hmm. So IV hydration will have to be done here. However, the, the hydration of normal saline, for instance, will, of course, facilitate the excretion of calcium from the body. So that's one option. However, to facilitate the removal, the hydration will also be paired with diuretic therapy, meaning while giving large amounts of, of saline, you will also be administering diuretics so to is, promote excretion. This is in the hospital? Yes, in the They're hospital. In so at hospital. the same time. No, uh, this is all management in, in, in patient, yes. So you have a patient on IV to hydrate them. Yeah, and to dilute, time, yeah. You're going to give them a uh, diuretic to so pretty much just mm -hmm. go through their system and put it out. Uh, not really. Okay, let me explain. So the hydration isn't really because the patient is dehydrated. That's not the problem. The problem was the serum calcium is really high, right? So therefore, when we give fluids, the patient didn't really need that, that fluid. All we're giving the fluids for is, one, to dilute the bloodstream to you know immediately lower the calcium. However, we need to eliminate it. So you have to pair it with diuretics at the same time. So both therapies serve to eliminate the calcium. Another is... Let's go to the next uh, mobility. So because the bones are fragile, correct? So we need to put stress on the bone, meaning we want to improve mobility because what will, yeah, read the second statement. Bed rest will do what? And the rest of, okay. So therefore, do we put them on bed rest or do we encourage activity? Encourage activity. Okay. Right. So no, you know, no resting. We're not saying go jogging. Okay. No, not really that level of activity, but we want them to be out of bed, sit in a chair, walk in the hallway. Okay. Diet. Thank you for reading. Do we really need to restrict? What does the first statement say? No nutritional needs are met, but the patient is on health to avoid a diet which is restricted. Or calcium. Okay, it's not really necessary, okay? Because is the hypercalcemia really caused by patient eating too much calcium? No. That's not really the reason. 
Okay, really, where did this calcium come from? From the bone. It was breaking down from the bone because of the high parathyroid hormone levels. Uh, but since it does cause constipation, so part of your therapy here is, of course, give prunes or high fiber, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's major constipation that results here. And don't forget, increase oral intake, uh, especially uh, oral fluids. For other medications, it's written all over the um, this paragraph. Uh, let me go back to... It's not mentioned here. Um, but the patient will also be given... Can they benefit from... Remember what you gave to patients with osteoporosis? What drug was that? What drug was given to osteoporosis patients? No, it was given weekly. 70 milligrams weekly. No, osteoporosis from MedSurge 1. You remember biphosphonates? Okay, the drugs that end in dronate. Yeah, like olendronate, uh, uh, um, uh, ibandronate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are called biphosphonates. So patients can also benefit from that, right? You give them biphosphonates, where will the calcium go? Right back into the bone. Okay, so they'll benefit from that drug as well. And here is your summary, education, when you discharge the patient. So increase fluids, emphasize that, stool softeners or laxatives. Okay, and then maintain a uh, certain activity level. Let's briefly discuss hypercalcemic crisis. If the patient does get, go into a crisis, meaning this is severely high calcium levels, so the patient will have palpitations here, uh, they'll, they'll seek hospitalization, put them on a cardiac monitor, and as already mentioned, we will aggressively treat them. So we'll give them rapid hydration with um, diuretics. Uh, we want them, look at the urine output, we want them to have 100 to 100, 100 to 150 mLs per hour. That's how much fluids we're giving them. Okay, so therefore, in order to monitor this, what do they need to have? A Foley. A Foley. And another hormone given is calcitonin. Remember the third hormone we discussed last week yeah. and from the thyroid glands? Okay, so this is the opposite of parathyroid hormone. So calcitonin will decrease serum calcium levels. Okay, we already discussed saline infusion and uh, diuretics. All right. Oh, uh, as far as diuretics go, there's a warning here. What kind of diuretics will be given? Well, the diuretics are not okay, very are good. So not the initial therapy. Okay. And we already mentioned biphosphonates. So here's the biphosphonates. Which diuretic do you? So uh, thiazide or... Um, in the other so it's one, thiazide. it says avoid thiazide. Uh, yeah, no, no, not thiazide. So yeah, you can do, um, yeah, spironolactone, yeah, or oh. anything but not... Um, so I said not Lasix and then not... Yeah, not, not uh, thiazide and not loop. What about SPS? Oh, SPS is for... Hyperkalemia. But it also decreases other... Uh, well, it's not really... Um, it, it's not a diuretic, technically. Oh, it's a potassium-wasting resin, yes? If you're giving potassium sparing, then that means you have their potassium levels. Uh, don't worry, because we have the fluids. Okay. It's not really a concern. So increase you then open, so increase potassium mm -hmm. the removal. Uh, that's it. Or in severe cases, then short-term dialysis, hemodialysis may be performed in really severe cases, unresponsive to fluids and diuretic therapy. Oh. And that's it. Any questions? 
Okay, let's go straight into hypo. So in hypo, this is the opposite problem. Now the patient has hypocalcemia. There are several causes for this condition. It can also be a vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, if that's the case, then the patient will receive both calcium and vitamin D. Manifestations would be opposite. So if you had hyper hypercalcemia earlier, now you'll have hypo. What are those again? Signs and symptoms of tetany? Ready? Chicken. 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 Chivostex. And what is this? The so. All right. Okay, so it's all here. And don't forget, there are other manifestations. Patient may have photophobia, dysrhythmias, and seizures with hypocalcemia. Uh, so therefore, what is one of your interventions when patients have this? So institute seizure precautions, which means you need to have what set up? Oxygen and such. Okay, very good, children. Hey, let's go straight to management. Management will be specific to, well, what is the patient's particular cause of the hypoparathyroidism? If it's vitamin D deficiency, then we will give calciferol, which is uh, vitamin D. And we will also give them uh, calcium, calcium supplements. If it's immediate, meaning acute, Hypocalcemia, the patient will be given IV calcium gluconate. Uh, let's talk about the diet. What will be given? Do we promote milk, dairy, eggs? Okay, read the second statement, please, on the last paragraph. Although milk may milk products and calcium. They are restricted because they also contain high levels of phosphorus. All right, are we clear? Low calcium people high phosphorus. Right. And then more, look at spinach. Thank spinach you. Spinach is also avoided because it contains oxalate, which would form insoluble calcium. So okay, thank you. Good mm -hmm. job, children. Okay. Mm -hmm. calcium salts. Oh. And then finally, if the patient's acute hypoparathyroidism is caused by a poor surgical removal of the thyroid gland, then you already know the pre and post op care. So, same, have IV calcium gluconate ready, watch for airway obstruction, watch for seizures. And again, your discharge teaching. That's it, really quickly. We did it in 15 minutes.